Okay, when it comes to addressing a particular area of the PCI configuration address space, we're going to use a term called BDFO. So that stands for bus, device, function, and offset within the configuration address space. You'll often see this written as B colon D colon F, and then maybe a comma and an offset, but you can also see it as B slash D slash F comma offset, B colon D period F offset. That's usually more used on Unix E-type systems. Now, as I've already said a couple of times, you can get to the configuration address space with both port IO and memory mapped IO. And for the extended address space, you must use memory mapped IO. We're going to focus on port IO for now because, again, that's what we saw in the initial BIOS. You know, within a few assembly instructions, you started seeing port IO accessing this config address space. And once we cover all of that, we'll come back towards the end of the PCIe section to talk about how the memory mapped I.O. works because you need to use port I.O. to set up the memory mapped I.O. Now, access via port I.O. is going to be an address data style access. So that was the pair of ports. And specifically, those pair of ports are called config address and config data, CF8 and CFC. Interestingly, despite the fact that it's always CF8 and CFC on Intel systems, they aren't actually listed in the fixed I.O. address space registers datasheet location. Now, so let's imagine that someone is using an out assembly instruction and they're going to, you know, have the instruction decoded, memory controller, and let's say they're outing to CF8. That's going to select some particular address inside of the config address space. So for instance, could be, you know, bus device function 000 offset four. Then if another out assembly instruction is targeted at CFC, that's going to be writing out some data specifically to whatever bus device function offset was selected by the write to CF8. So that writes the data actually into the register stored behind the scenes. Likewise, an assembly instruction of in after it's already been properly configured in the CF8 register would allow reading in the data via a in of CFC from that particular offset. And that gives you back the data that was stored in that particular register. Now, when it comes to config data or CFC, interpretation of that port is super easy because it's basically just 32 bits of data to send or receive. On the other hand, config address CF8 has this particular parsing that you have to understand. So let's, you know, this is a bit more tricky. Let's focus on, you know, from left to right, what do these bits do? Starting with bit 31. If bit 31 is set, then that means that this is actually enabled and this is going to cause port IO to write to the PCI configuration address space. It's basically telling the you know, hardware behind the scenes, hey, turn this into a PCIe transaction. Next are some number of reserved bits, which must always return zero. Then we have the bus number. And we said there can be up to 256 buses in PCI, and that's why you have eight bits used for the bus number. So two to the eight, 256, that specifies the bus that you want to access. Then device, we said there can be 32 devices, which is two to the five, so five bits, bit 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Five bits for the device number of what you want to access. And then three bits for the function number. Two to the three is eight, eight functions. 256, so you're going to have enough 8 bits to index into 256 buses, 5 bits to index into 32 devices, 3 bits to index into 8 functions. And then after that, that's the BDF. Here comes the O, the offset then into the PCI config address space. And you can see the least significant 2 bits must be 0, which means this must be a 4 byte aligned address. You can only have, you know, 1, 0, 0, 0. 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So it's going to be, you know, 4 or 8, etc. So based on the data that's written into CF8 register, the hardware will parse the particular 32-bit value according to this interpretation and use that to route its PCI transactions accordingly. So now let's go back for a second and drill down a little bit more on the Dell Optiplex example. So we saw before there was some port IO pokes and address data style. But let's just break it down to just the very first instance of writing to the PCI config address space that we saw. So those were the assembly instructions. Now let's do a deep dive and understand, you know, what exactly is going on here. So starting with these three assembly instructions, 
CF8 into the DX register, that is the output port, some particular constant into the EAX register, that is the four bytes that are going to be written to CF8. And so we just talked about a second ago, how is that interpreted? So I want you to go ahead and clear your mind. So how do we interpret that constant? Well, here's our little table. And if we wrote out this constant value with nibble-wise granularity of hex values, and then we changed it into binary, grouped four at a time as normal. Now we regroup it according to this grouping up here. So eight bits for an offset, three bits for a function, five bits for a device, eight bits for a bus number. So with that grouping, what we come up with is that this is accessing B, D, F, O of 0, 31, 0, and F, 0, so hex F, 0. So bus, 0, device, 31, function, 0, offset, F, 0. All right, so boom, Miss Frizzle throws down some out assembly instructions, and that particular bus, 0, device, 31, function, 0, offset, F, 0, is written into CF8. So now on the next read or write to CFC, it is going to be pointing at this particular location, this particular offset in the configuration address space. So what are the next assembly instructions? Now we have moving of FC to DL, so the least significant bit, least significant byte of the DX register, so that turns it into CFC because it already had CF8, and then some random constant again written in there. So we don't know what this constant is, but whenever it's written to CFC, it's going to be placed into the configuration address space where specified 0310F0. All right, so handed on down, written into CFC, and forwarded into a particular register, whatever register happens to be at bus 0, device 31, function 0, offset F0. And what that's actually going to cause is some sort of memory mapped I.O. that we're going to talk about later to be mapped at this particular address that was written in there, fed1c000. So that gives you a sense that probably you could have put other addresses there and that would lead to memory mapped I.O. happening at some other address, but we'll come back to that later. So what is PCIe device 0310? Well, you actually already saw it quite early in the chipset section. You just probably didn't notice. So we were talking about the data sheets and what the particular device IDs were, but what it was saying over here is that this LPC device is device 31 function 0, and Intel always reserves bus 0 for their own usage on their internal hardware. So what is offset F0? Well, I'd like to tell you, but instead we're going to come back to it later when we can drill down into it more. But it's actually quite important. But what's more important for right now is that you fully understand and internalize this notion of parsing these 32 bits in this particular way so that if you want to go off and look at some assembly for the BIOS, you can understand what exactly it's talking to so that you can look up in the data sheets what exactly the particular bus device function offset that it's accessing is. So that's an extremely important thing when you're trying to understand what the codes are doing. You have to be able to interpret these 32-bit things and then go read the fun manuals. So let's go do some exercises to reinforce this.